uh, he uh, he must have some uh, some evidence. No, just his legendary instinct. Yes. All right. Thank you, Ralph. I, I'm glad you alerted me. I'll get to it right away. Uh, you know that we cover 46 buildings for the Lamont Corporation. 45. Went up like a Christmas tree in July. Faulty maintenance of the furnace thermostat. Now we indemnify Lamont against liability we pay. All building. Lamont could put up a nice high rise. So you can't be serious. The thermostat of a Kendall furnace never requires maintenance. Now, Mr. McGregor, may I refresh your memory? which might possibly be becoming a little untrustworthy with age. I trust it. Well, then you know that just last week, the Lamont Corporation broke ground for a billion-dollar residential industrial complex. I heard about it. Have you also heard that of all the insurance companies in the world, we are within 24 hours of underwriting Lamont for enough policies to pay for every seat in Yankee Stadium? I wouldn't live in a building without a candle furnace. <sighs> Mr. McGregor, You are accusing a multi-million dollar account of hiring an arsonist. You said that, Captain. Well, you're implying it. How do you suggest I phrase it? There will be a slight delay in settling your claim, Mr. Lamont, because our most experienced investigator, a man I've worked with for 20 years, thinks that you've hired an arsonist and are attempting to defraud us. 30 tenants, 30 suspects. And if a bankrupt credit dentist hired an arsonist, the case stays wide open. Fraud, Kessler. Lamont. Or one of the tenants, or someone connected with one of the tenants. I'm going to find an arsonist. And if you don't, whose side are you on? You ought to be giving me a pep talk. Oh, I would, Mr. McGregor, I would. But as head of customer relations, I worry about our image. Transglobal does not conduct its business affairs according to lunches or superstitions or aching corns. I am a vice president. I'll never forget your first day in the mailroom. Now, what was her name? Ethel. Over there by the water cooler, and you and she. Triton, Vault C. I'll get it tomorrow night. Then what? San Francisco. Pineview Motel. There'll be a letter for me. All right. I don't care if they use a microscope. It will still be another accidental. <laughs> what do you think of that? No carbon deposits. Because the fire was so hot, carbon wouldn't adhere. Let's find some copper. See if it melted. All you insurance boys would like to prove fraud by arson, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, it wasn't a Lamont building, so that lets them off the hook. But three nights, two total losses. Negligence? Hang them on a pyro and relax. We'll get them. Pyros are idiots. I want a mechanic. Ever set one using a furnace thermostat, Willie? Thermostat? Hmm. Let's see, let me think. Oh, yeah. Christmas Eve, 63. Nice job, I say so myself. They had it down accidental for six weeks. Somebody stealing my style? Ordinary fires burn at 1,400, right, Willie? Fahrenheit. You check the copper tubing? <laughs> that won't melt to 2,000. <laughs> I always said it, Willie. You were that far from being the best. My price was just as high as his. But you've done time. You just got lucky, that's all. <laughs> 
No, you didn't. You just wouldn't quit. How was I to know white pine takes 45 minutes to burn an inch deep? Any idea where he is, Willie? How do you know it's him? I want it to be. Can't help. Nobody else can help. You don't even know what he looks like, do you? Alfred Francis Fisher. Sometimes I think you guys dreamed him up. for this year. Save our jobs and play with matches. Oh, B minus. <laughs> Nero is our hero? There you go. What's on the teletype? A wheat elevator in South Dakota. Duplex in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Clown. <laughs> Just last week, one of our boys retired to Florida. He would love it there. Trans Global Insurance would be lost without me. I want something big, like another office building. One large economy size. <laughs> A jazz joint in Chicago. Nightclub? Get me a follow-up, will you? Wait a minute, she works for us. Fish is on the loose and you'll nitpick. You'd set the law back a hundred years. Not one single fact. And already you think it's arson and you can identify the arsonist. Too dead in that fire. Don't forget it. Fisher doesn't kill. Oh, no, he just sets fires. Now, Mike, you know as well as I do, it fires a Frankenstein when it's let out of its cage. One statistics on how many pyros and torches we found when their fires turned back on them? All right, let's just say that Fish is careful. Lucky, you mean. I mean careful. Last night in Hollywood, part of a film studio. Suspected arson, no arrest, burned up some movies. Movies? George Owens, do you have my reservation? Oh, well, Mr. Owens, of course. Any messages? I'm expecting a letter. Well, I'll check and see for you. I put you in room, uh, uh, room 12, and it's nice and quiet. Well, I'm sorry. Sorry there are no letters. Um, this is, uh, Mr. Thomas. Hi, George. Hello. Does it have a tub? I mean, not just a shower. I want a tub. Oh, ours are combinations. We have a bathtub and a shower. As long as you have a bathtub. Mm. Gonna drown your wife in it, huh? <laughs> I don't have a wife. Oh. Uh, how long will you be expecting to stay with us? I don't know. Oh. Well, Hancock Medical Supplies. Thermometers, stethoscopes. Hey, you're not uh, peddling the pill, are you, sport? What pill? Uh, Mr. Thomas is in sporting goods. <laughs> uh... <laughs> You know, you, you salesmen, you travel all over the country and you pretend to be bored with it. <laughs> May I have my key, please? Key? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Here you are. And here is what to do and see in San Francisco. Thank you. You're welcome. Your room's right through those doors. Me no sale. Sweetheart, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I ought to know. Old Georgie Owens is here for something, and 
that it's not for selling. Rick, their client's whiplash claim brings great big tears to my eyes, but we're not paying. Never mind his lawyer. I'm thinking of his wife. She's a dancer, man. It's soul food. So, what you're going to do is cover every discotheque on the Sunset Strip. You got the picture, buddy. The first time she drags him out on the dance floor to do the boogaloo, just grab me a dozen 8 by 10s Hold, will you, Rick? Go. Mr. Kessler in New York on two, Mr. Bodine. Kessler. Kessler. Carol Kessler, customer relations. I got it. Get back to you, Rick, okay? Mr. Kessler, a pleasant surprise. What? Oh, business as usual. Important? I knew it was when I heard it was you, sir. And I'm clearing my desk right now for A1 priority. McGregor, huh? Now look, he's on the way, and get this straight. He's your responsibility. Now, I don't want him to have the least excuse when he falls flat on his face. You stay with him. Uh, any special reason? Oh, or isn't it uh, any of my business? Well, because he's, he's, he's old and slow, that's why. Besides, every time I think of him, I have to take a pill. Look, Bodine, when he moves out to grow his roses and look at his scrapbooks, you move in. You called the right man, Mr. Kessler. Announcing flight 93 from New York. Now arriving at gate Goodbye, girls. Nice seeing you. Dr. Ralph Marshall. Dr. Ralph Marshall, please come to the information counter on the upper level. Dr. Ralph Marshall, to the information counter on the upper level. They didn't tell you about me. Uh, Long Island Shipwreck, 1935. Kentucky Mine Disaster, 46. New York Central Sabotage, 67. You're a living legend, Mr. McGregor. That's not exactly what I meant. Is this your investigative costume? Well, we're informal out here. It's an effective disguise. First time in Hollywood? Second, I managed to catch the opening of Birth of a Nation. The studio's run by a man named Martin Cooper, a big wheel in need of a retread. Done your homework on Crown Triton? Our finances are shaky. Fact one. And that fire. A mind blower. A what? Well, the alarm worked, so the sprinklers must have been okay. And it was safety film. All the same, everything went. Well, that doesn't prove it wasn't accidental. When was the last time you heard of three motion picture fires in four days? One of the rare local natives? A uh, transplant from Riverside Drive. And just itching to get back. Ambitions like the East River. It has a smell all its own. Well, keep on impressing me, and I'll put in a word for you. Maybe it can be arranged. Handle many arson cases? Oh, a couple, but never with a real torch or mechanic. At least you know the vocabulary. Yeah, well, what I don't know is what it is with them. Somebody like this Fisher. He sets fires during a living. Yeah, but he's got to get some emotional charge out of it, doesn't he? The kind of play psychiatrist is when you've got a pyromaniac trying to find his pattern anticipate. Fisher, Willie Peanuts, Crotty. Doesn't do a bit of good to wonder if Mama loved them. Somebody somewhere is laughing. We're playing Laurel and Hardy while they laugh. Think about them laughing, Odin. Oh, 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 oh. Who are you messing with, my I just dropped. No, no, but there are people around. No, 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 no,
Crown Triton's shaky, you said. Well, it won't be the first time that some clown's avoided bankruptcy by burning his inventory. Do you have dinner with me tonight? Dinner? Your name's Ellen Farrington. I asked one of the maids. I suppose you're going out with that salesman. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. But thank you. It's a flattering invitation. Widowed or divorced? I'm divorced. That salesman? Cliff? Well, Mr. Thomas is a bachelor. Would you recommend a restaurant nearby? I mean, one where you're not going tonight. Well, there's one up the street about three blocks. It's the Red Lion. You can say it's none of my business. That's the way I am. I live, Mr. Linderman. How do you want it programmed? Uh, Crown Triton film or films lost in all three fires. Any other specifications? For us, not your machine. Uh, it should be a box office bomb of the first magnitude. A multi-million dollar dog that had empty drive-ins from coast to coast. And if I deliver, where do you go from there? Assuming our torch got both negatives, the original and protective inner positive, we locate the surviving prints and head them off at the pass. Ah, the simplicity of computers. That one's frowning at us. Name stupid. We've got machines here wouldn't be seen in the same room with them. I'm marrying a couple next week. I suppose it's better than having them live in sin. Come and get them. Do you mind, Mike? I've always had a thing about the movies, you know, the glamour. I'll get it. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? Mr. Bodine, telephone. Save my seat. Eureka. Murder in apartment A, Crown Triton. Bodine. King of the Crusades, another Crown Triton. Coincidence odds don't come that long. I haven't phoned because I've had nothing to report. Not bad. Two of them ought to make it easy for you. What's that supposed to mean? It means that he hasn't fallen on his face yet. But he's leaning, Mr. Kessler. A full 45 degrees. Don't worry, I can take it. I say tinfoil, too. Two, count them, two. Murder in apartment A and King of the Crusades. Find out how much they cost and how much they grossed. Also, just how far the insurance coverage went toward pulling Crown Triton out of the red. Also, how many prints still remain in circulation along with their present whereabouts? The next time Fisher sets a fire, there'll be somebody lying in the weeds for him.
funny. <laughs> You know, I could have hit the street early. We don't want to miss our beauty sleep. <laughs> well, Mr. Owens, you certainly made a big night of it at the Red Lion, huh? No, not at all. I've just been out walking around enjoying the city. Is that my letter? Oh, yes, it came for you about, oh, about an hour ago. And it's special delivery, too. Yeah, all the way from Canada. Couldn't help noticing. Yeah, I've noticed a few things, too. That important, huh? This must be your first time in town. Now, what makes you say that? Well, salesmen usually find a place and stick to it. Home away from home, right? Good night, Mr. Farrington. Come on, let's get back to the TV, huh? Or, uh... Cliff. Cliff, please, if you don't mind. I get the message. Well, you said you had to be up early tomorrow to go to work. <laughs> you see, Bodine, there's a difference between you and me. Your logic, I'm instinct. I go by my nose. And my nose tells me I'm going to win this one. You don't believe me, Sonny. You stick around and watch. So McGregor's still after Crown Triton. Well, it may interest you to know, Bodine, that I have on my desk at this moment a report from my stockbroker urging me to buy Crown Triton. If you look in the financial section of your local paper, you'll see it jumped three points on the morning board with no signs of peaking. Now, does that sound to you like a company teetering on the brink of disaster? No. But then how do you explain the fact that in all three fires... I don't have to explain anything. Mr. Kessler, there are ten film still outstanding six of murder in apartment a's and four of king of the crusade if you recall mcgregor now and one of them goes up just one bodine whose side are you on mine all right 48 hours and then i'll expect a full report in triplicate and don't spare the adjectives
right up. I'm not your father. Not sore, are you? Because you spoke your piece? Sonny, my calluses have calluses. Job done. Where's your friend? Cliff, he's out. Say, have you had dinner? There's plenty in the refrigerator. Would you like a drink? No. What are you watching? I don't know, but it's swell. I'm just a nut for old movies. Why don't you pull up a chair? There's been no time for anything else. Ellen. Is there something wrong? My name's Alfred Fisher. Sometimes I use another name because I want to be somebody else. Well, why would you want to do that? Haven't you ever wanted to change? Make a new life? Yes. I'm a 
expecting a long distance call. Maybe tonight, I don't know. You're back. I was uh, planning to have it stuffed and mounted. Yeah, just a minute. You got a few seconds? Yeah, what do you want? I want you to butt out. Ellen, huh? I call her that. What do you call your wife? Listen, Owens, I'm gonna no, tell you. No, you listen. Ellen's hanging on to you like a life raft. You push her off and she's gonna drown a bottle of booze. And what business is that of yours? You use people. Go on, swing. But you won't. You're all talk. <laughs> now, why hit you? Better to make a phone call, huh? That, uh, that outfit you sell for. I wonder what I'd find in that little black bag, huh? Order forms? Samples? Sales memos? What's in that little black bag? It's my affair. Yeah? Well, now it's mine. I'm leaving for Portland tonight. That'll give you a few days to think things over. You try to chase a man out of a woman's life, sport. You better be ready to take his place. One day, man, one day I'm gonna join that Golden Gate on a roll. All the way down. Mr. McGregor? Bodine? Today is the day to get stoned. Your inventory wasn't in the safe. Some of it was. I mean, who expects a fire? We lost over a thousand. Stuff for TV? Stock footage? Mr. Holland, does this title ring a bell? King of the Crusades? No chance. You got that listed as Crown Triton. I don't handle this stuff. Maybe a uh, coincidence or pyro. Thanks. No, sir. It was Fisher, all right. Everything but his autograph. Films. Not counting woody woodpeckers. Well, it could be a red herring just to throw us off the track. Yeah. Could be a for an Agatha Christie plot. Face it, Bodine, I have. You're looking at the end product of a blue ribbon pratfall. Nothing to do but go back to New York and face Kessler. Oh, if you ask him, maybe he'll give you an extension. Yeah. 
Sure, and the devil serves lemonade. Well, I think I'll go down to the bar. You do that. Get drunk for me. Mr. McGregor? Eh? We were a pretty heavy team for a while. Well, we might. I'd like to think so. to prove you wrong, Inspector. I shall not have him killed. Thank you. Sit down. So, we two meet again. It was inevitable, Doctor. Mr. Silas. Hey, Eddie.
long distance, you can use the desk phone. Yeah, wins. It doesn't matter why I'm right here. Both. I don't make mistakes. Go ahead. I don't have to write it down. On the Railway Express. I see Yards Van Buren. 18108612. It's not necessary to repeat it back. Where? Wins Arms? All right, I'll be there. And then it's over. Tell me you'll be back. I don't want lies. Come with me. <laughs> Come with me, Ellen. And I don't want your pity, and I don't want two nights in another town, and goodbye. We'll come back together. It's a chance I've never let myself have. That isn't official. Get it out of here. Inside's clean. There's a lot of smoke in the lobby. We'll wrap it up. Bodine, Transglobal Insurance. This is Mr. McGregor. Angus McGregor? Keith Wallace. This is Mr. Silas. This theater. This one of yours? No, we don't know yet. Are those the films that were in the theater? That's right. I mean, no. He may be. Well, what's it gonna be? Are those? Those pictures? Tonight was their last night. See, Eddie brought them down as usual and left them inside the front door for the exchange man. I saw them myself when I left the theater. The exchange man? Yeah. You see, on the last night, he comes about ten minutes after he closed. He picks up the old and drops off the new. Mr. Silas, what were the titles of the pictures you were going to show tomorrow? You see, I like to give young filmmakers a break. What we call underground films, uh, Big Daddy is Dead, and the one that just won the award at the Montreal Film Festival. Winterscape won. Under W. Paul Linderman, I want a complete cross-check, and I want it fast. You die hard, don't you? Yeah, you will, too, when the time comes. Mr. McGregor, were we to tie in between this and the film exchange last night? I think somebody's ordered at least five fires set in order to destroy Winterscape 1. Winterscape? But how could they? They'd have to be in the business to know about it. This would be its first showing here in the States. McKinney. He didn't sign until it was over. Waited for the projectionist and Mr. Silas to leave. Then waited for the exchange man. So he had to be tipped off by somebody in the woodwork. Who knew the traffic schedule. An underground film. How many prints are usually made? It's hard to say. Try hard. Not a major studio. Uh, hat in your hand, financing, safe guess, a negative, and ten prints for release. A homer. And the last of the night. It's Winterscape One. Oh, Marie, I really don't care what people might say. We'll be back in a few days. No, no, I'm not going to worry one single bit, because you and Mr. Palmieri can, can run a hotel much better than I ever could. What? <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. All right, Marie, if you say so. All right. Goodbye, dear. You know, I, I haven't flown in a long time. Flight 26 for New York, now boarding. That's us, Mike. No doubt about it, I'll be working for you one of these days. Did you get the distributor? Epic's a little shook up. Yeah, let's shake him up some more.
Jerry Cole. This is Lois Warwick, our print manager. How do you do? Sit down, gentlemen. Let's get this mess cleared up. Print manager, you'd know the traffic, the location of the films you distribute? I'm your girl, Mr. McGregor. She didn't know I'd throw out of this window. <laughs> Who else would know? Almost anybody. We're not dealing in government secrets. Shall we? What does Scape One, written, produced, photographed, and directed by Jimmy Apache? Jimmy who? Word must be slow getting out to the coast. Apache, a live one. Pop art happenings. You'll have to meet him. It's a guaranteed memorable experience. What's the insurance coverage? Let's see. Yes, here it is. 40,000. Oh, not enough. Well, it's standard for a film of this sort. After all, we're not talking about Gone with the Wind. That's not what he meant. No incentive. At the price our arsonist commands, there'd hardly be enough left over to finance a good meal. What about this Indian of yours? Jimmy Apache couldn't afford the premiums on a magazine subscription. And maybe found a backer. Anyway, it's worth checking. Now, the prints themselves. Say, I don't like this. What? Lois, did you know about this? About what? If you don't mind. Mr. McGregor, we bought the negatives and a dozen prints. One was sent to Crown Triton. Some producer wanted to see Apache's work. Two went to a film exchange in San Francisco. And in two fires here, we lost both negatives and eight. Leaving just one. What's going on here, Lois? Mr. Cole, wind escape wasn't the only thing we lost. I've got a list from here to Central Park. Which is why we have arson instead of theft. Distribution. What does he mean? Well, steal a film print by print, and we'd be waiting for you by the third one. Distribution. The last print of Wind Escape 1, where is it? Mr. Cole wants to know now. Right away, Miss Warwick. Miss Warwick. Mr. Cole, go ahead. Wind Escape 1 has been shipped railway express to Chicago, sir. Illinois Central train. I want it out of that car into a Brinks truck. Yes, sir. That trace you requested on the chance that somebody's taken out a policy on Mr. Apache's behalf, we got fast action. Negative. If it's not insurance, then what? Publicity? Maybe somebody just didn't like the movie. Yeah. What? Are you sure? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm listening. Thanks for calling me first. That was Miss Warwick. Too late. Fisher got the last print. When they hit that railroad car with water, it blew up. And there was a roast inside. So now it's murder. My fault. I killed him. With stubbornness, with pride, with blind stupidity. I was so certain it was Crown Triton, I sat back and let the computer do the work. And the computer's no smarter than the man who feeds it. I like Fisher. I admired his professionalism, his unblemished safety record. Well, unblemished until now. I even like you, Badine. How much longer do I have? 
I know that this doesn't suit your image, but I'm sure that Kessler will be happy to have it redecorated. Mr. McGregor, I... Uh... Sonny, I'm a rusty old relic. And if you apologize, I swear I'll belt you right in the mouth. Come in! Well, you must be Michael Bodine. I'm Carol Kessler. Uh-huh. All right, McGregor. Are you going to prove arson or not? Mr. Kessler, it was arson. A motion picture film. Why? We don't know, but we just rescued the last print of it in Chicago. Fly it here and have the answer tomorrow. Well, you did it again, didn't you? You were right, Kessler. Mike Bodine is something special. Why the devil did you do a thing like that? Damned if I know. Another day, what's that gonna buy me? A later edition of the want ads? Which, thanks to your recklessness, you'll be unquestionably sharing with me. Dad Fisher. He's been one jump ahead of us since the start. How? Someone obviously has been feeding him inside information. Inside spelled E-P-I-C. Prove it. The motive. Without insurance, what's the motive? We're going to have a powwow with that Indian. I want to see his face when I tell him that every print of his film has been destroyed. Flight 535 for New York, now boarding at gate 34. All passengers for New York, please report immediately to gate 34. We didn't have to scale the Statue of Liberty to find him. That's Jimmy Apache. His fellow genius, the one with the love beads, goes by the name of King Kong. I can see why. Is that camera turning? Of course. Plot looks fascinating. You can find your way from here. With only my nose to guide me. You're very weird. I'm just asking you a simple question. Angus McGregor, Transglobal Insurance, Mr. Parchi. Um, this is my associate, Mike Bodine. Hey, man. You got a groovy face. <clears throat> we're not here for that. It's Winterscape 1 we're interested in. Do you like it? We'll probably never know. Both negatives and every print have been destroyed by fire. Okay. Places. Okay, children, places for the next thing. The news really demolished you, didn't it? Well, I sold that to Epic outright. They could fill the Radio City Music Hall and I wouldn't make another nickel. Maybe the thought of that rankles, huh? Why should it? I'm an artist. I'm not a trades. An artist who's just been informed that his award-winning opus has been irretrievably lost? You didn't even wince, Mr. Apache.
Where's the other print? The one you bootlegged. Hey, what did you say your name was? Angus McGregor. There is another print. Well, it's just a 16 millimeter print. It's strictly for home viewing and what Epic doesn't know does. I want to see that print now. Now? And lose three hours of valuable sunlight? With my kind of budget, that'd be a catastrophe. But uh, tonight, at my law. And don't worry about chicks. We're loaded. Okay. Where's the print now? It's safe, man. It's in my mother's hat box. Yes? Here's uh, what you wanted. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Thank you very much. Any call yet? Well, you know, he's probably so tied up with business that he hasn't had a chance to get to the phone. Lady, none of my business that you ain't married. Been here 30 years. I could tell you stories. Tell me one now. How much you know about this gentleman, friend? What do you mean? Five will get you 50. The cops are looking for him. What? It's in his eyes. You can't hide the eyes. Salesman, he tells me. Uh, outfit in Canada, medical supplies. <sighs> like I'm a delegate to the UN, that's how he's a salesman. I have never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. Okay. Okay. But no call comes in a week. Don't say I didn't thank you. here, darling. I, I, I mean, it was unnecessary. I told you on the phone, Cole himself doesn't know another print exists. Nevertheless, it does exist. I want the address. Uh, 
What are you uh, going to do? My dear, it can't possibly matter to you. Thank you. As you say, it was risky, my coming from Montreal, but it was a risk I was obliged to take in any event. My darling. Try to see it from my point of view. <laughs> people. I saw Kong up on the Merritt Parkway, beating holes in the pavement with a pickaxe. I saw Beaver and Subway planting seeds. I saw beautiful flowers growing up through the concrete and the amazed, glazed looks on the faces of the truck drivers. The land grows back over the shattered pavement. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah, man. Go. I see you, too. Let's roll the film. Hit the light. Until it says the end. 
see it again. What? Our answer's in that film. It has to be. I want to see every foot of it over and over, all night if I have to. Call Cole and have him arrange for a projection room. Hey, man, I'm not sure if I like that. Mr. Apache, you don't have to. Tell your big friend to put it in the hat box and let's go. Put it in the hat box. Soda. What can't you do? Hmm? Business. I hope that's uh, the first one. I didn't know anybody was in that box car. No, don't. Let's go to pieces, Fisher. Give me my money. I'm not paying. I still owe you. 50,000, and you'll get it when the job is done. It is. That was my last. That beatnik... That beatnik managed to get a 16-millimeter print from somebody at the lab. I got every film that we agreed on. If you made a mistake, you might as well have got it. nothing. As long as Apache's got one. Not another nickel until you get it. Well, hire me because I'm the best. I only have one rule. I don't work in the blind. I know who you are, Landis. So don't you forget that. I got a woman in San Francisco. She's got a motel. I got a life ahead. But you wouldn't have the 50,000, would you? And I'm not gonna let you spoil it. I want that money tonight, now. Or I'm gonna make a phone call. Stick to your own game, my friend. And blackmail, isn't it? And since it's murder, what would you say to my making a phone call? It wouldn't be hard for the police to find a woman who owns a motel in San Francisco. Tell you what I'll do, Fisher. A bonus, $5,000. Buy the ladies some pretty things. My equipment's in Chicago. I can't go back now. When I started looking for the best man, I was told that if you were turned loose with a book of matches, it would take 20 years to rebuild New York. Your bonus, along with Apache's address. Fisher, you don't have to be neat. Yes, sir. What do you see in him? I don't know yet. Ready. Let's have it. burning the frame take me a minute to set up a heat filler but you won't get a sharp picture let's try what is it soon find out 
Hey, my movie disappeared. What's happening? Ready for a still? Not yet. Marty McGregor, get into some clothes and come down to Epic Films, 639th Avenue. I'm running a movie made last year, and guess who the star is? Collier Landis. Who's Collier Landis? A murderer, Mike. A mass murderer. You know I never mix business with food. Mike Bodine, a gift from Hollywood. Martin Moss, Metropolitan. Mr. Moss? Apache, King Kong. More gifts from Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they're natives. Sit down, Marty, and let's go. May we have the still, please? That's Landis? The hair. Imagine gray hair and no mustache. It's him. Thank you. Angus, how do you do it? Native stupidity. If you're finished, can we go? We're doing a kissing in Brooklyn. Just leave a frame from that sequence. Can we take the rest of the picture with us? Yeah, you can cut it up in a banjo picks for all I care. Who did this Landis murder? Three years ago, Collier Landis embezzled over a million dollars from the stockholders. He left a clear trail to Miami and a plane to South America. The plane exploded over the ocean. 58 passengers and a crew of seven. They found some oil, a piece of wing, and a plastic nursing bottle. And he went in the opposite direction with dyed hair and a mustache. To say nothing in a million bucks. Angus, where did you get that film? Mr. Apache made an underground movie in Montreal. By chance, Landis was in it. And by chance, Landis went to a film festival. Imagine how he felt when he saw himself, when he learned it was going to be shown in the States. Marty Landis hired the world's best arsonist, who nailed every print except this. Meaning he knew the locations. Who told him? Well, we can rule out coal. I can't quite see him burning his own assets. But that print manager, Warwick. Ethel or regular? Either one. Both cans. Got two cars to start? Just one big one. Love the... Just like the ones Kong was wearing this afternoon. Oh. But why would he want to kill her? I don't think he did. He probably told her about that extra print and where to locate it. And she told Landis. She told Landis? You mean she called him in Montreal? Operator, police. Someone named Apache live here? You just missed him. He caught the BMT. Never mind. Get out. Don't hurt me, man. I'm a dropout. Just get out. Think it over. What else could he do? With all the films destroyed, there were two people who could testify he was still alive. Warwick had served her purpose. 6262219. Now call right back. Marty, get it, will you? We gotta get going. Where are you gonna be? I said there were two people. Landis got Warwick, but Fisher is mine. I can take it from here, Fisher.
Still want to look? Wasn't he supposed to wear a cat's eye ring? Who are you talking about? My Fisher. Fisher? Don't tell me you think he did this. Yeah, but the others. The... Sure, the others, but not this. Gasoline, for pity's sake. And the cans are still right there. <laughs> Use your head, Bodine. Fisher did his job, and that was it. Landis found some pyro, gave him a few dollars. <laughs> Fisher, that's a laugh. You know where he is right now? On a plane for Florida, California, pocket full of cash, taking a nice vacation. Sure, that's what he's doing. Just like you say, some crazy pyro. Buy some breakfast? No, I'm, I'm not hungry. Buy you coffee? tell you about the time I came in in the last minute and won the Sixth Army Championship? Well, it was 62-61, and I came in at forward. I took the inbounds pass and dribbled to the top of the key. Aha! They were in a zone. I passed off. We kept working the ball back and forth until finally I got the pass back. There were two men on it. I faked to the right, dribbled to the left, and took a jump shot. So, after one week, three days, four hours, and... 20 minutes, we come back to my original suggestion. Pay the Lamont claim. But we got at the truth. Saving transglobal, not one cent. I thought you were supposed to be on a plane. As I was saying to H.B. an hour ago... You were with H.B.? After 34 years, a resignation should be tendered personally. He, he resigned? He wouldn't accept it. Mumble something, well, you can't win them all. Naturally, I felt disinclined to contradict him. But you should be happy to learn he did agree with you on one point. Said I was getting too slow to go it alone. Said it'd be a good idea for me to groom somebody to step into my high-button shoes. Did he have any suggestions? That office down the hall. On a clear day, one can see a hundred fashion models going to work. July 7th, 1936. Waste not, want not. 